It might seem that the future of cities is a topic all about technology. The future of cities is a conversation about the future of people. By 2050, an estimated 68% of humanity will live in urban areas. And of course, that future is going to be enabled by emerging technologies. How cities adapt to utilize technology, how they're purpose-built around technology, and how they employ data will determine how successful they are. Cities will evolve and not just be places we live. They'll be places that help us live better. Cities throughout history have always harnessed new technologies to try and improve our lives. Amsterdam installed their first canals in the Middle Ages for defense and water management. But by the 17th century, the intricate systems also helped the city become an international trading hub. Today, cities have progressed from disparate infrastructure to interconnected systems of devices designed to make urban life more efficient. In many urban areas, heavy traffic can lead to congestion. But in the near future, sensors will let drivers know where the nearest empty parking spot is, reducing congestion. Interconnected systems like these are part of the ever-expanding Internet of Things. By 2020, it's estimated that there will be over 50 billion things talking to each other. All that chatter is expected to get faster, too, as internet speeds jump from 4G to 5G, unlocking the potential of driverless cars, autonomous drones, and even things like remote surgery. And it's not just that the communication will improve. These systems and devices will learn from experience. I get asked often, how do you become a smart city? And that's almost an impossible uh, question to answer, simply because there's no playbook. Jonathan Reichenthal served as the chief information officer for the city of Palo Alto and as a leading expert on emerging technology trends in urban environments. One of his key messages, any city can be a smart city. Some people think about the future of cities, they think about mega cities. They think about Dubai, they think about Shanghai and Hong Kong. But the world is made up of thousands and thousands of small cities that are marginally prepared for the needs and the expectations of of a 21st century community. One of those cities is in southern Italy. The ancient city of Matera may not come across as an ideal place for laser-fast internet, but this centuries-old city is working to become one of the first cities in Europe outfitted with 5G. Noi non possiamo essere imitatori, ma dobbiamo essere innovatori. Now in the last few years, there's been a real focus to rejuvenate this area. Last year, Matera started conducting tests to upgrade the mobile network, a project that involves a total investment of 60 million euros over four years. In Finland, the government is taking another approach, transforming an entire city district. Welcome to Kalasatama, an old harbor of Helsinki. Developers hope to finish construction by 2030 on what they call Finland's first true smart neighborhood. The city of Helsinki now has a great opportunity to test pilot new innovations, what could be uh, scaled up uh, to support uh, better living in Helsinki. According to the people designing Kalasatama, residents living here will get an hour back of their day. The goal is to give home for 25,000 people. One of the simplest ways to give people a few moments back is to cut down on the time they spend in traffic. The developers have come up with an innovative way to do that, get garbage trucks off the road. Residents take their trash to a port and it gets sucked to an underground disposal center. But high-tech conveniences can come at a cost, sharing personal data. As data increasingly becomes part of how everything is done, and data about you is used for delivering all sorts of both public and private services, people are, are concerned about what that means to their privacy. Amsterdam is often heralded as one of today's smartest cities, and that's thanks in large part to its open data program. Don't think of smart cities as just a technology solution. Think of it as collaboration, uh, involve communities, uh, involve citizens. Amsterdam has nearly 2,500 startups today. Many companies and research programs were able to get off the ground because of open data, which in the past would be too difficult or expensive for developers to acquire. Like Rowboat, the world's first fleet of autonomous boats. The five-year project with MIT aims not only to reduce road traffic and transport goods, but collect even more water data at the same time. 
looking at the city, reinventing the city, uh, this can't be done from a lab. So we really want to get out there and work with citizens of, uh, of Amsterdam and really innovate from the fabric of the city. Cities everywhere will soon start experimenting with all sorts of smart technology. All this innovation that we're doing, a response to the migration of people into cities, that all falls under this big umbrella, smart cities. But really what we're talking about is how are cities responding to the future? But as cities grow smarter, not all will succeed. That's because success isn't defined by waste solutions or driverless boats, but rather the people they serve.